In 2015, we hiked the Colorado Trail from Denver to Durango. With only 75 miles left, we ran out of time. Instead of hiking to Durango, we hitched the train. This year, we tried again, but instead of picking up right where we left off, Keith claimed we had to start all over again, or it wouldn't be a through hike. On the fourth day, we started hiking over 10,000 feet and the forest gave way to more open views. Sometimes we would walk through dense groves of aspens. At 12,000 feet, we took a break on Georgia Pass and watched a few mountain goats grazing. On day six, we passed the 100 mile point. A few miles later, we resupplied in Frisco. We enjoyed some real food and I tended to my huge blister I got on day one. I finally cut the dead skin off only to find two new blisters. It may not look better, but after 10 days, my blister was finally starting to heal.
while I enjoyed a nice, flat, seven-mile forest stroll just before reaching Twin Lakes, Keith decided to summit Mount Albert instead. His route was anything but flat. He had to climb 4,500 feet to reach the 14,440-foot summit, the second highest peak in the contiguous U.S. He met me in Twin Lakes and enjoyed a mountain-sized victory meal. The next day, we started the Collegiate West route by climbing over Hope Pass. We're 11,319. After two weeks and 200 miles, we climbed over Lake Ann Pass. After Cottonwood Pass, the weather was cooperating, so we decided to hike over the next four passes the same day. It was a long, challenging day, but we succeeded. Each day we had to watch the sky carefully to avoid being caught in a bad storm while hiking over a high pass. However, every day the weather would reset with clear blue skies.
We enjoyed lunch where the Collegiate West route rejoins the main Colorado Trail. Tina says, I have to go get more water because of this. Yep. After exactly three weeks on the trail, we had hiked 300 miles. For the next 40 miles, we would be hiking through cow country. We were always surrounded by colorful wildflowers. All right, guys, don't mind us. We're just passing through. We came across a lost llama that had tangled itself in a tree. Not sure what to do, we untangled it but left it tethered. We hiked on and found its relieved owner about an hour down the trail. Often, the clouds were as scenic as the mountains. At over 12,000 feet, we crossed the gently rolling plateau of Snow Mesa. The train changed once again and we were back among majestic mountains. Thank you. 
The wind was howling as we reached the highest point on the trail. We ended the day at Cataract Lake and watched storms in the distance. The marmots kept careful watch over their homes as we passed. We descended on an almost perfect set of switchbacks down into the Elk Creek Canyon. team was a big snow year with many new avalanches. It was amazing to see entire slopes devastated and it was difficult to hike through the debris left behind. This is where we went left in 2015, but this year we're going right from all this pass. New territory. New territory. After 28 days on the trail, we had hiked 415 miles. Over the next few days, we realized what we had missed when we ran out of time in 2015. On the trail, the five second rule doesn't apply, especially to M&Ms. <laughs> Yummy. Columbine, the Colorado State Flower.
A nearby fire filled the valleys with smoke and made for a colorful sunset. At around 12,000 feet, and just before our final high climb, the worst storm of the trip rolled in. Four hours later, the storm moved on, and we were able to continue our hike. So, Kennebec Pass, last pass yeah. that we go over. Yay! Yay! <laughs> this is our last day. We've yeah. got about 18 and a half miles to go to Durango. So where are we? We're at the top of the last little pass, or little hill. Uh, before we descend to Durango. You ready? You ready? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Done! Oh, high five, good job.